Hi and welcome to this new video. Today's video is a little bit special. Maybe some of you expected a speaker video here, but this actually will be a phone review this time. Maybe you already follow my channel and then you already know that I um, am really interested in phones as well. I would love to have a phone channel, but of course I try to do speaker videos only because I'm obviously called speaker Tony and not phone Tony or something. But today's video um, is really something I definitely wanted to share with you because as you might know when you watched my last video, um, I was camping in front of the Apple store for one day with a friend. I know you can call me whatever you want. I read this very often on the internet. Other people don't respect other people's, I don't know, actions or, uh, I don't know, um, opinions. They just say, oh, you dumb ass, you came to front of our store. Uh, yeah, I think it's just really respectless and you, I don't know, can just say it a normal way. Just say, I wouldn't support it, I wouldn't do it, but still I'm fine. Um, but well, there are many stupid people out there, but I won't focus on this this time. Um, but just do some kind of, I don't know, comprehensive uh, and hopefully very short review of the iPhone. So I um, put on some bullet points onto my uh, iMac here, uh, which I can read now and then I will go through all of those different categories and just I don't know talk a bit about my experience with the phone. I got it on the 3rd of uh, yeah, November um, so just some days ago but I think that I got a very nice I don't know kind of overall experience with the phone so let's just start. First of all, we are going to talk about the design and of course this is one of the I know, main new features with this device here. So of course if you hold it in your hand, you instantly notice that it's totally different looking than the I know, usual iPhones. Um, of course it still has quite the same shapes as the iPhone 7, but it definitely looks totally new when it comes to the back because it has a glass back now. Um, it has a new camera um, setup here or I don't know, camera position. Um, it has a new frame and a new display, which is of course the most important part, but I will talk about this later. So uh, first let's, yeah, I don't know, let's uh, go through all of the things you have. Of course, uh, your dual camera setup, as you can see, I got the space gray color. In my opinion, that's the best color. The silver one is a bit too flashy, but maybe some of you like it, but I personally much prefer the darker color. Um, but a good thing, of course, is that all of the phones have a black, um, I don't know, um, front panel now, so you don't get those ugly white bezels anymore with a very small black bezel again, which is, of course, typical for, I don't know, phone displays because you always will get a very small, tiny uh, black bezel from the display itself. Maybe you see it if you have a white phone. With black phones, you will, of course, not notice this. Then you have your Apple logo, the iPhone logo, uh, just some CE signs. In the US, you won't get those because they... Uh, managed to bake them into the software, but in Germany, you can see them here, you will still get those because it's not allowed, uh, I don't know, to, to, uh, to put them into the, because it's not allowed to put them into the software or something, so they had to put it on the back of the device. At the bottom, you have all of your ports, uh, which is actually only one because, again, no headphone jack. Um, you have a microphone here, a speaker there, and a lightning port. Um, on the side there is the brand new and much bigger home button i really like it because it's much easier to reach it also yeah gives a very nice click when you press it very high quality um, and also uh, yeah it can do many things now so if you hold it together with the volume button um, it'll uh, yeah show you the turn off sign or the turn off page here if you press it once with a um, volume keys it'll do a screenshot and if you hold it It'll um, activate Siri so you can talk to Siri and if you of course press it once it'll turn on or off the device. Then you have your SIM card tray, the volume buttons and the um, here, how is it called, the silent, I don't know, switcher from Apple which is very helpful especially when you are in school and you quickly want to mute your phone or something. Then of course we have the brand new stainless steel frame. My main concern with this one was that it probably will get scratched and dented very easily. But as you could see from many drop tests, maybe I don't know Jerry Week Everything or Everything Apple Pro and many others already did drop tests on this phone here. And you could clearly see that the stainless steel frame held up much better than the um, aluminum frame of the iPhone 8. So that's definitely I don't know, no disadvantage or no uh, I don't know, negative point of this device because the stainless steel uh, frame seems to do just fine even after drops and a lot of abuse um, so yeah that's just fine plus of course it looks in my opinion much better than the other frame of the older iPhones but that's just subjective because many people think that it's I don't know uh, too flashy although in the space gray color it's pretty okay and it gives the phone a really nice and very high quality feel to it so it really sets the device apart from the 
let's say, cheaper iPhones, which of course still aren't cheap at all. Um, and here we have a metal frame or a normal aluminum frame from an iPhone. It's not an iPhone. Uh, it's a Xiaomi Mi Mix 2. Um, and you can see it looks uh, a bit more, uh, maybe not elegant, but it looks uh, more sophisticated than this one. And it's really up to you which one you like more. Now I also wanted to do a size comparison because I will talk about the display later. So we have um, some cases from other phones here. So I have the iPhone 7 case here. So you can see it's a pretty big case. Sorry, I didn't have the phone to the camera. Um, so it's a pretty big case, but in real life the iPhone 7 still is a little bit smaller because the iPhone 10 obviously has a almost one inch bigger screen. Um, uh, so yeah, I think it's still pretty impressive because of course the iPhone 10 has a much bigger screen and is uh, about the same size as the iPhone 7 or all of the older generations because they all pretty much look the same. Then we also have the iPod 6G here. This also resembles the iPhone 5, 5S and SE, also all of the yeah, 4 inch devices. And as you can see, oh, I forgot to turn on flight mode. I don't want any messages here. Uh, so it resembles all of the 4-inch devices by Apple. You can see still some size difference, but it's pretty much okay. And we also have a case of the Samsung Galaxy S8 here. Um, and you can see, of course, this is a pretty big and fatty case. Um, but of course, the Samsung in real life is quite a bit taller, but also a bit slimmer than the iPhone. So it really comes down to which uh, one you prefer. Maybe you like slimmer phones, so then the Samsung is the right one for you. But I personally would definitely prefer the iPhone in the hand. It just gives you, I don't know, a more mature grip and feel in the hand with a stainless steel frame and the, I don't know, flat surface because the Samsung, of course, has the edge. But that's again up to you and very subjective. Some people like the very round design of the Samsung. I personally dislike it quite a bit, um, so I much prefer the iPhone in this regard, but it's really up to you. So yeah, I think also a comparison with the iPhone 8 would be great, uh, iPhone 8 Plus, um, but I don't have it here right now. Um, I also don't own it anymore, but I would have some cases, but I can't find them right now. And this of course still is much bigger than the iPhone 10. The iPhone 10 really seems uh, tiny against the iPhone 8 and 7 Plus, or 6 and 6S Plus, um, just because of the bezel-less design. But don't let Apple fool you, because the iPhone 10 still doesn't have the biggest screen. It'll show you more than the iPhone 8 Plus when you read text like this, but when you hold it like this to watch movies or something, the iPhone 8 or the iPhone Plus generation will still give you more overall screen area, so don't let Apple fool you with the 5.8 inch compared to 5.5 inch screen. Also the overall feel in the hand from the device is pretty nice, so it, yeah, it feels just very sturdy and it definitely feels like a device which could cost about $1000, which is of course does, and it definitely um, holds up to the price point when it comes to build quality and also feel in the hand as it's a very, very high quality feeling phone. I think definitely up there with the Xiaomi devices which are fully made from ceramic. So definitely 10 out of 10 points here. The next thing is the software. And in my opinion, I think that the software is very great here with the iPhone 10. With the iPhone 8 Plus, I still had some complaints because sometimes it would, I don't know, uh, just stutter or stop and I don't know, stop an application or something. But with the iPhone 10, this definitely is not the case at all. So they definitely fixed it here. Um, I don't know, maybe uh, they put more time into developing iOS 11 for the iPhone 10 because it's, of course, the more hyped device than they did with the iPhone 8. Not sure, but iOS 11 definitely, I don't know, feels smoother and more, I don't know, I don't know more fluid on the iPhone 10. So, of course, you know, Face ID. Oh, I need to activate it. Now you all know my code, I quickly have to change it. Um, but of course you unlock it with Face ID and as you can see, the performance is just flawless. You can see no, I know no lags or anything. It's all very, very smooth. So yeah, definitely no complaints here. Yeah, okay, now it doesn't work. Of course on camera it will never fully work like it does in real life, but yeah, um, the device is pretty flawless when it comes to the performance. Still, some Android guys, uh, also me including, are complaining that the animations are so slow. If you compare it against, I don't know, a Xiaomi Mi Mix 2, you can see the animations are much quicker on the Xiaomi. So uh, yeah, the Android devices win with the speed of animations, but overall I would still maybe give the edge to iOS 11, not because it's slower when it comes to the animations, but just because it feels more fluid, more smooth, and also way more intuitive. I mean, a Google Pixel already feels great, 
but this might not be as fast when it comes to opening the settings app or something, but it feels definitely a bit smoother. It really has, I don't know, the drive to it which you want uh, when you're using a phone or something, so that's definitely also great. Still, I have some complaints, so for example, some apps are not optimized yet, so you will get the black bars which you are trying to avoid by, uh, with this ex expensive phone here. Um, for example, also, I think it's this app, yeah, you can see. Also, many games aren't optimized yet, but of course, you have to keep in mind that the phone is just some days old, so just give Apple one or two more months, and then all of the apps, including Google Studio uh, or YouTube Studio, will be optimized, and then the experience will probably be close to perfect. Also, two more advantages of having iOS. Of course, as we all know, you get many, many years of updates, um, and you also don't get any slowdown when you use it. This is my main complaint with Samsung devices. They offer top notch hardware but the software definitely struggles i mean in the first few weeks it runs just fine although touch with also doesn't quite i don't know match my expectations because it doesn't look that nice also bixby is very annoying especially the button for it and after some months it just becomes worse if you are a heavy power user like me and you want great performance even after six months of use i wouldn't recommend a samsung device because they all show slowdown while iphones um, yeah, never slow down, maybe like 5 or 10% while the Samsung devices definitely have way more decrease in speed when it comes to, I don't know, uh, long-term use. The next thing is the hardware, of course, um, and of course you cannot say that much about it with the iPhone X. You can expect nothing else than top-notch, uh, I don't know, flagship hardware here is the best of the best which you can get in the market right now. And of course, this is what we all expect when we uh, you know, pay $1,000 for a phone. So again, starting with the outside, the stainless steel frame here, the most durable glass uh, ever made on a, or ever used on a smartphone, about as durable as all of the others. Uh, maybe a bit more, but that's not really noticeable. So you should definitely wear a case with those phones, especially with the two-sided glass. Um, of course, a top-notch screen. Yeah, I will talk about this also a bit later. Um, of course, you get, uh, I don't know, a bezel-less design, uh, great brightness, great color accuracy. You have stereo speakers, waterproofing, of course, the new A11 chip. Um, this is, of course, a bit controversial because many people say, yeah, you don't really need the power, which is somehow true in everyday life. You will not notice if you have an A11 chip or a Snapdragon 835 or a Snapdragon 8, uh, I don't know, 21 or something. They will all run really, really fast. Although I would still give the edge to the A11 because, as you can see now, it just smokes the Android device when it comes to game opening. But of course, I mean, those 5 or 10 seconds aren't really always noticeable. And when you open everyday tasks like, I don't know, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, the Android devices will be just as fast. But still, it's of course really nice to know that your phone is the most powerful, uh, powerful, sorry, um, phone on the market, of course, 11,000 points in Geekbench really beat out any other phone processor at the moment. And of course, although you won't always notice it, it's pretty nice to know and of course nice to have when you want to do graphical intense games or something. Also, when you take a look on the inside, you will see that this really is a phone which is beautiful inside out as it has the new very interesting shaped L-sized or L-shaped battery. So those are actually two batteries connected to one. You of course have the first stacked logic board in a phone which is also very innovative. Um, of course the device is also waterproof, IPX67 rated. You have all of your cables on one spot, so it's definitely a very, very nice device. Also when it comes to the inside, so it doesn't look like a crappy China phone from the inside with all of the things uh, you know, thrown together, but it also looks very interesting when you open it up. But still, I wouldn't recommend it because it's very hard uh, for a normal guy to close it up again, but I don't think that anyone of you will approach a disassembly of this device like I would do with a speaker or something. But still, it's a very great phone when it comes to the hardware. In my opinion, I think one of the best on the market, even better than something like the Xiaomi Mi Mix 2 or the Samsung Galaxy S8, just because uh, of the stainless steel frame, the more powerful processor, and also um, I think the very innovative internals. So for example, also the OLED screen, which is uh, curved around like this which of course makes it more expensive, but also allows the bezel-less design at the bottom of the, uh, of the screen. And usually you of course have the chin here with any other bezel-less phone. With the iPhone you don't because they managed to put the display technology or the display, um, I don't know how to call them in English, 
um, the things which give the signals to the display under the display by uh, folding it around and that's of course also very innovative and you of course have to pay for this innovation um, and that's why I think that the hardware of the phone is just great no matter if you like Apple or not you cannot deny that the phone is a really great piece of machinery uh, from the outside and from the inside. The next thing I want to address is of course the screen. We have an all new Super Retina HD screen with I think 458 pixels per inch, great viewing angles and in my opinion the best screen you can get on a phone right now. Of course I can totally understand when people say yes I like the saturated colors with the uh, um, uh, Samsung devices or I like the very natural look with my iPhone devices. I mean the older ones with the LCD screen had a very natural color look. While the iPhone X really is, uh, I think, the perfect compromise between those. It offers great contrast, of course, due to the AMOLED screen. It's super bright. Indoors it's as bright as the Samsung Galaxy S8. Outdoors the Samsung has a sun mode, which makes it much brighter than the iPhone. But in inside or indoors they are roughly the same and the iPhone definitely is more than bright enough and also much brighter than the older iPhones. It has great color accuracy. Um, I really love this about Apple, they calibrate their display almost perfectly when it comes to the color, accu color accuracy. Sorry. Um, so if you are watching an image, the Samsung will of course maybe look better to some of you because they push the contrast and push the color while the iPhone always looks natural and that's just the look I prefer over the others. And that's why it's for me of course uh, the best display you can get right now. Also when it comes to the bezel layout, some people might prefer the Xiaomi here, which overall has smaller side bezels while the iPhone has bigger side bezels but of course also doesn't have a bezel at the bottom and at those sides here just has the notch. So that's uh, no, also up to you which one you like more. Some say that they like the bezel setup of the Xiaomi or the Samsung more with the symmetrical bezels at top and bottom and some people including me just like this design more because in my opinion it just takes it I don't know, one step further. Of course the side bezels still are a bit bigger than usual or than usual with the bezel-less dev uh, devices. But of course you also get no bezels at the bottom and no bezels on the, I don't know, ears here when you want to call them like this because it of course has the notch. And talking about the notch, let's unlock it quickly. Wait, it didn't work because I'm behind a tripod. And if you are watching a video, for example this one, you can of course watch it like this. The AMOLED screen will turn off here and it will look just like a bigger bezel like you got with the older iPhone 8s and I don't know, 6, 6s and all of the older iPhones. Or you can crop it in with a YouTube app and I, I was really impressed. I mean all of the apps which support uh, video viewing already support this gesture here. So you can just zoom in and then it will um, yeah, fill in the entire display and of course the notch will slightly cut off something from the screen. For me that's no big deal, for some people it's really disturbing but it's definitely nice that Apple gives you a choice here. And of course uh, the notch is also very controversial, some people hate it. I personally really like it, it makes the phone, I don't know, very outstanding and very recognizable looking. Which is of course uh, important for a phone so it really stands out. Um, but I can also understand when some people really dislike this notch there because it could be annoying sometimes. For me it's really nice, especially um, together with this bezel-less design. It's just a beautiful looking screen. Also addressing some other issues from AMOLED. Let's unlock it again here. Um, so for example the blue tint, many people were complaining that uh, the AMOLED screens have a blue tint. But I can already uh, let you calm down because the iPhone definitely does not have a very heavy blue tint like the Google Pixel 2 devices or especially the XL device. Um, the smaller one doesn't have it. So if you tilt it a little bit you will see the screen will slightly become blue but not very much. It's about as much as all of the competition. So for example the S8 or the Note 8 by Samsung. So it's really nothing which really stands out or which makes the screen bad because that's just the thing with AMOLED. All of you were asking for AMOLED or the OLED screen, now you have the OLED screen and uh, you also have to live with a very slight blue tint but it's actually not very much. Again resolution is more than enough, um, 450 ppi is uh, yeah, very great, a great compromise between sharpness and battery life. Um, again very nice brightness, great viewing angles, of course apart from the very slight blue tint. Uh, great color accuracy like I already mentioned and of course the last thing is the um, I think it's called the yeah, Pentel matrix so you get this with all of the OLED dis displays so with the older Samsung devices for example you also got this and despite a 2k resolution you could still see some very slight pixels due to this Pentel matrix where each pixel had I think three sub pixels and uh, with the LCD screens and with the AMOLED screens they only had two 
subpixels and this made them a bit less sharp uh, although you had a very high resolution iPhone or the iPhone 10 doesn't have this because Apple fixed it with their, I don't know, fancy new diamond penter matrix and no matter how close you go to the device, you do not notice any pixels, which is of course great, but also what you expect for a $1,000 phone again. So yeah, the display definitely gets again 10 out of 10 points. No one can complain about this. Maybe some people like the more saturated color from Samsung more. I can totally understand it, but for me, it's definitely one of the best displays, especially because it's bezel-less. This just looks so impressive. Every time you get it out of your pocket and turn it on. So the next thing definitely needs to be the camera. Let me quickly run down the specs for you in case you forgot them. It has two cameras, one wide angle lens with 24 millimeters at an aperture of f1.8, which is stabilized, optically stabilized. And the second one now is also optically stabilized compared to the iPhone 8, which didn't feature this feature or 8 plus. Um, and this second one is 56 millimeters telephoto lens for a two inch or two times zoom, um, which is again also stabilized and features an aperture of f2.4, which is also a bit bigger than with the iPhone 8 plus, which had an aperture of f2.8. So it really is right up there when it comes to the top notch cameras. It also has a quad LED flash. I think it's a bit unnecessary. I don't know why built in four flashlights, but maybe it's great. And especially the slow sync flash, which of course cameras uses, used for ages already, but now we also have it in the phone. Definitely makes a huge difference when you do nighttime shooting. I can now show you an image compared to normal flash and then the slow sync flash because it just makes a huge difference when you want to do uh, photos in the dark. Um, and they just look much better with this kind of flash technology. And of course also um, it definitely is in the top five of smartphone cameras. For me personally, it's the best smartphone camera because I just love Apple's color science. They always have a very natural color tone to them. It has tons of dynamic range. And of course, no matter if you like the, I don't know, um, software processing of the Apple's, I don't know, camera processor, um, despite you like it or not, uh, you have to agree with me that this camera just delivers stunning results. I think you can already see them in your screen right now. They just all look nice. Again, I can totally understand when people have a different opinion, when they, I don't know, like the Samsung devices more with the, I don't know, pre-edited images because they really push contrast and color to the maximum. Maybe some people like it. Or maybe some people say that they like the Google Pixel more, it's really up to you. But for me personally, the iPhones always have had, I don't know, the best camera for me, the best, uh, I don't know, camera processing. I mean, even in the dark, it delivers very, I don't know, natural results. It never looks over sharpened or anything. So for me personally, the iPhone cameras have always been the best. Again, that's no problem. It's your opinion. If you don't agree, don't hate on me. It's totally fine. Uh, other cameras also deliver stunning results. But for me, this one is by far the best to use um, for almost any purpose. Also, of course, the new front camera is here. It's the true depth camera system, which now allows you to do um, bokeh shots also from the front camera. It's actually nothing that special because the Google Pixel and Note 8 already have had this. But with the iPhone, it still, in my opinion, needs some fixing. So maybe it will be fixed with iOS 11.2 because it still cuts off a lot of your hair and ears, which doesn't look that nice. So for now, I wouldn't recommend this feature. Just do the portrait shots with the back camera where they look uh, 10 times better than with the front camera. The next thing I wanted to talk about is the battery life. Again, it has the new L-shaped battery. It has about 2700 milliamp hours. And I was actually super impressed by the battery life because it's actually pretty good. And this also gets the phone one step further to being worth $1,000 because battery life definitely is nothing to criticize here. In the speed test or in the battery life test of Mr. Who's the Boss, you could see that it won against the iPhone 8, which is of course a very easy test to do, but it also won against the iPhone 8 Plus, the iPhone 7 Plus and the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. It just lost against the OnePlus 5, which I think lasted 10 minutes longer. This is of course very impressive and embarrassing for Samsung because the Note line actually stood for very great battery life and now they got beaten by the new iPhone 10. So usually when I come from school, my phone has about, I think, 50 to, uh, I don't know, 50 to 60 percent battery left. Even when I use it really heavily in school, my Xiaomi always lasted me throughout a day and the iPhone even has 60 to 70 percent battery left, which is in theory better than the Xiaomi Mi Mix 2, which is very impressive as this device has a very great battery life 
and it also holds uh, or lasts the entire evening and I only need to charge it overnight. So even with heavy use, I think that you will get about one day of battery life. If you are a very, very heavy user, you will maybe, I don't know, need to top it up in the evening again. And therefore, speaking of, I don't know, refilling the battery, I can highly recommend the fast charger. I know it's $70. I know it's a shame and very embarrassing for Apple that they don't give it to you in the box. But if you have it, trust me, you won't regret it. I just bought it some days ago and it's really life-saving for me. I use it all the time. If I see, oh, I have 30% battery left, I could make it uh, for the rest of the day, but maybe it's safer to charge it up. I just plug it in for 20 minutes and I have about, I don't know, 50 or 60% again and it will last me definitely uh, the entire evening. So it's definitely something I can recommend. Um, and it also, of course, has wireless charging. You can buy one of those overpriced uh, wireless charging pads in the Apple Store, but you can also get a really cheap one by Anchor for about $15. Sadly, it's no fast wireless charging, just five volts and one amp. A bit disappointing, that's why I also didn't buy a charging uh, thing or charging uh, plate for the iPhone because it's just slow wireless charging. But for all of you who like this kind of wireless charging, it's there with the iPhone 10 now and also the iPhone 8. But for me, the fast charging is much more important than the wireless charging and I really can highly recommend getting this. And again, my verdict on the battery life is, I don't know, 10 out of 10 points, maybe not 10 because uh, I have already used the Mi Mix 1 and this lasted me throughout, I think, two days because it had a 4,500 mAh battery. So it gets 9 out of 10 points for almost perfect battery life. So the last thing I wanted to talk about are the gestures and the face ID. So let's start with face ID. You just wake it up by tapping it once and then it will recognize your face and you can simply swipe up and you are inside of the phone. It also works with Apple Pay and any other paying things on the internet. So it's really reliable. It always recognized me. I think when my face was wet after the shower, um, when my hair was messy. So maybe for all of the students here, if you, I don't know, pull out your phone under the table, it will still recognize your face from about one meter away. So maybe you are in a class lesson and you quickly need to translate something. You can definitely do it with the iPhone 10 because it also recognizes your face from about one meter away when you are sitting on your chair and you have the phone under the table. So just wanted to admit this, I tried it today and no one noticed. Next, let's also do the gestures. Or maybe I forgot to mention, uh, again, it also worked in the morning when my hair was messy. Uh, it also worked uh, when I had bright sunlight and it of course also works in the, I don't know, pitch black darkness. So no worries about that. Now let's talk about the gestures. Again, there's no home button. So you just do this gesture to go home. You can hold it and then it will open multitasking. And you can also do this kind of right corner gesture to open up the multitasking menu a bit faster. And one more gesture I wanted to show to you is this. It allows you to quickly switch between the apps. I see me using this all the time. It's just super helpful. And also I think after at maximum one day, you should have fully adapted to the gestures as they are very intuitive. They never make you think, how do I close this menu? How do I do this? So it's pretty much uh, fully, I don't know, intuitive uh, and not, I don't know, complicated at all. It's very fluid and very nice. I think it even is better than the home button. I mean, the home button always was a gesture like this. Now it's this kind of swipe gesture with a very nice and smooth animation in iOS 11. So I definitely think that this kind of I don't know, swipe gesture is a great replacement for the home button, which is of course gone now due to the beautiful bezel-less design. Of course, also one more thing here is the um, one-handed mode. Therefore, you need to access the settings, go to general, then to accessibility and then enter the one-handed mode. Therefore, you just do this and then you can, of course, already open all the apps you want on top of the display with a one-handed mode. It's life-saving for some people. I barely even use it, but I just wanted to quickly show this to you. So I think this is already it from my kind of, I don't know, short review of the iPhone 10. I hope you enjoyed it. I try to share my overall thoughts. And now I will also say, um, I don't know, the very controversial sentence. In my opinion, the phone is worth $1,000, but, but not for everyone. There are of course people who don't need this phone, who don't need the processing power, who don't need the 4K 60 frames, who don't need the bezel-less design. Therefore, I can recommend the Samsung Galaxy S8. It just go for, goes for $550. The LG G6 about, I don't know, $350. The OnePlus devices or even the Xiaomi devices. I mean, they are top-notch fast. Uh, they have top-notch camera. Of course, not quite on the level of the iPhone, but keep in mind this one goes for $300 only. So you don't need to buy this phone, but please also, I don't know, understand other people 
who really like this phone and think that the price is justified, like me, because it's just, I don't know, a phone of my dreams. It has everything, all the features I want, and I'm also willing to pay this kind of price for it to get it. Of course, I don't know, I think 1,150 euros are a bit overpriced. I think 999 euros would have been the most fair, most perfect price for this device. But of course, maybe you are paying the Apple Premium. Or maybe if they would have included a fast charger in the box, I would be willing to pay $1,150 or euros. It's euros. Um, but like this, I would have wished that they made it about 100 euros less expensive because 1,150 is really very expensive. 999 euros would have been perfect. Um, but still, I think it's almost worth it or even fully worth it as it just has everything I want. Smooth software performance, top-notch hardware, best camera for me, great battery life, nice gestures, cool features like waterproofing, stereo speakers and face ID. So it's pretty much a flawless device for me. Of course, not for everyone. There are tons of other phones which might, I don't know, um, be better for your needs. But for me personally, this device definitely uh, is my dream phone or something. So I think this is already it. In the end, I just quickly want to show you a speaker sample. As I'm speaker tone, I also need to include a, I don't know, music test with the speakers of the iPhone. In my opinion, they are the best speakers on any phone. Maybe not the loudest, and everyone always says, yeah, HTC boom sound beats out everything. I don't quite agree, because Apple actually uses DSP technology to boost bass and to overall, I don't know, make sound better on normal levels. And you'll also hear this in the comparison. So we have the Xiaomi Mi 6 here, also stereo speakers. They sound about the same as my old HTC U11. Um, and we will compare them against the um, iPhone 10 stereo speakers as well with a uh, yeah, modern bassy, uh, no, uh, some kind of NCS track. Um, and then you will hear how much better the iPhone sounds than the competition. Maybe not as loud and maybe not, uh, I don't know, uh, as annoying sounding, but for sure the best sounding stereo speakers you can find on a phone just for you uh, people who were interested in this maybe. So now I will already say goodbye. I hope you enjoyed this, again, short kind of review. If you did, please leave a like or subscribe to the channel to see many more videos, also speaker videos next time. Until then, have a great time and bye-bye.